Hi, my name is Vlastimil and I'm a hobbyist. My hobby is removing the slab allocators. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the originally the title of the session included slop, but meanwhile it was already removed. <laughs> Thanks. So in 6.4 RC1, which I installed yesterday on this laptop, so it's already sl slop free. <laughs> and uh, if anyone needs the uh, the, the use the kernel on some small system, they have the alternative in the slab tiny uh, configuration option. And uh, why is this uh, relevant is that <coughs> it means that now we can call k-free obje uh, on objects that were allocated on kmem cache alloc as well as kmalloc, which is something that XFS people were interested in at some point. And it also means that uh, K-free RCU and the KV-free RCU should work as well. And, uh, yeah, and there should be like no downside, uh, except uh, after Joel session, it means that if we, if we implement something for slab to handle this use case, it means it will have to be supported by all caches and not just KML caches because somebody might call it K3RC uh, K on some uh, uh, non KMLOC objects, so we'll just have to keep that in mind. And another maybe a surprise might be that somebody might try to use the trace points which are separate for K3 and KMEM cache free, and uh, if they don't enable both, they might miss some free that went through the to the other uh, API. So, if you are tracing uh, slab allocations, you should keep that in mind. But hopefully, that's not uh, uh, like critical user space breaking. So with uh, slop out, that, that's fine, but uh, but that was the allocator that I'm uh, able to pronounce well, and there's still slap and slop, and I always don't know how to pronounce them uh, properly, so the next step is that I would like to remove slap as well. And uh, besides that reason, uh, the other reasons is that, of course, that's another thousand lines of code to maintain. And uh, sometimes we find out that some part fe feature of that, uh, like the debugging, has been broken for years because nobody uses that. And uh, so we, we can have unknown breakage. Uh, but an another thing is that for the to allocators, we maintain the common layer, which is another uh, bunch of lines. And uh, with these common layers, it's always uh, a trade-off between do I duplicate code that can then be nicely inlined, or do I have this common layer in another C file, which has to call into the implementation-specific file, and those uh, calls cannot be inlined without uh, link time optimization. Then uh, there are features that that uh, either had to be re-implemented for both allocators or were implemented for just one of them. For example, the memcg support had to be, was duplicated work because it was done in both. For preempt RT, just slab is supported. And uh, the last thing is that, yeah, once we have a single allocator, it's uh, much easier to think and implement of more API improvements, like the one that Joel uh, was talking about, and I have also some more later. Yeah, and it, it's also not uh, common in the kernel to have uh, multiple implementations of the same thing. It made some sense for slop, which 
has had a very specific use case and was sufficiently small, but it was still blocking uh, some API progress. Yeah, and another example is I can think of are just the uh, ZS malloc uh, backing storages, which we have also multiple ones, but these are pretty small self-contained things and while kmalloc is something everybody uses. So uh, this is not the first time that slab, slab pro uh, was proposed to be removed. I found uh, at least three cases when it was discussed at the, mm. uh, the Linux MMA mailing list. And uh, yeah, usually the, the main uh, reason was that yeah, there are workloads that uh, would regress when switching from slab to slab. And uh, so it was always uh, rejected. So uh, I guess the question is, uh, are there still objections today? And uh, since Google guys were one of those that always objected, I guess it's a question for them. Yeah, thank you. Um, for, for Google's perspective, um, I think with the introduction of per CPU partial slabs, that uh, slub has come a long way to, especially addressing the point from 2012 there, um, for the 10% performance degradation, for at least for TCPRR. Um, and what my colleague Binder did in the last bullet point is he has recently compared these results and posted them. I think performance is, uh, it can go in either direction if slab or slub um, is better for micro benchmarks and some well-known open source uh, workloads. The big thing that he is calling out is the overhead in metadata, um, or just for because slub uses much larger page sizes and it has the per CPU partial slabs as to get a lot of that performance back from TCPRR that he finds that on some workloads that we have two, 300% increase in the amount of memory that is set aside using slub. And so I don't think there's an objection to removing slab for the cleanup. I think that, I think a lot of folks, because slub has become the default, um, perhaps are unaware of the much larger memory footprint of slub and that now that we have our attention to focus on it, that uh, we can make some incremental progress in that direction as well. Um, but I wouldn't have a objection from Google's perspective from Slab, but happy for others to talk about it as well, if anybody else has a thought. Yes, so, so ch just for the background, uh, we were uh, using Slab for a long time in uh, SUSE kernels, and uh, when we were evaluating to uh, essentially move to Sloop, uh, uh, Mel has done quite a lot of benchmarking and and found out exactly the same thing. It can be uh, some some plus for one, some minus for another, uh, but essentially on par. Uh, and so back then, we, when we were moving to Sloop, then we our main reason to do that was uh, debuggability because uh, uh, Slab just had to you had to recompile hope for reproduction with Sloop. Everything is just. Um, you can enable that in runtime, and that's a huge advantage. So uh, that's that was the main decision point for us to move away from that. And so those two main <laughs> reasons from 2019 uh, are gone. So unless there is somebody very married to to slap, then I I guess we should just go ahead and and just remove it and and fix those problems that uh, David has mentioned incrementally. Uh, when I was at Intel, yes. uh, we, we, we worked, I was working with a team that uh, did TPC benchmarking for an unnamed commercial database. <coughs> uh, and Slab was at the time better performing. Um, that, 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 that same unnamed commercial company now ships its own distribution and enables Slub. Uh, so clearly the rationale for 
using slab for TPC benchmarking has must have gone away for that to have happened. I wasn't at that company when it uh, made the choice, so I don't know what the decision-making process was, but clearly it was made. Did there's somebody online? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Greg, uh, also from Google. I just had a question. If the, the, the I, I agree with what everybody's thinking about performance parity, or at least it sort of being a, a wash, depending on which direction you look at it. But in terms of the memory overhead, are these structural things, or are these uh, are the, the kind of known matters that we can chip at? Because it feels like everybody in the room is getting more and more sensitive to cost and memory uh, spend. So maybe the memory overhead is even more critical than the performance parity. Yeah, I was, I was actually surprised that uh, the memory overhead was, was brought up uh, as the reason this time, like the main objection. Uh, I think the results showed what, like 30% more uh, that of Binder or something yeah. like that. But uh, the question is, it's 30%, but uh, is it so large in absolute numbers as well? Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the, the dimension marks are available and Binder did a, a complete workup and we're thankful for it. Um, on some workloads, yes. Uh, just in boot overhead, I think that he was seeing on a regular off the shelf, um, I forget whether it was Skylake or Cascade Lake, he was seeing that just after boot, we were, Slub was taking 110 megabytes more than, than um, Slab. But depending on the benchmark, it depends on how many, it scales with cores, of course, the per CPU partial slabs. And um, that is how we address the TCP round robin problem to get that performance parity back. But at the same time, with very large core counts, 160, 192, um, depends on how many slab caches you have. And that's why we're excited about the third bullet point here, which is the per object KMM accounting that we now have, where we can share those KMAP, uh, KMM caches together, and as a result, I think that if we are willing to fine tune Slub to use not only smaller um, order pages for its uh, slab caches, but also um, being able to shrink down the number of per CPU partial slabs depending on the core count, that it can be minimized but not achieve the same level of slab. Yeah, yeah I agree that it's a structural problem because the way that as you said, slab edges its performance is by having uh, many per CPU caches. And it's actually interesting because I think when Christopher Lameter introduced slab, one of the points was that slab caches too much objects in the array caches. But as, as time went on and the number of cores increased, then, then we have more slabs because they are per core, and also the default uh, algorithm that selects the default order also takes the number of CPUs into account, so that even makes the problem worse. So if we had to uh, deal with this, we would have to achieve the performance by something else than having multiple slabs and slab pages per CPU and then probably means going back to something like the array caches. I just uh, wanted to mention one more thing. As far as I understand, the array cache takes up space inside the slab, right? Inside the slab. Yeah, it can, but the, um, the problem was not the, uh, the array object itself, but how many allocated objected caches. Right, so because the array is missing in the slab allocator, wouldn't you have, would you be able to store more objects per slab? Because now you have the space that goes for the array, now can be used for objects. But yeah, I need to look into the per CPU partial slab thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the per CPU partial slabs, it's in the documentation in the kernel tree is actually wrong. It's, it's not just a read-only value you can write to it. And so that's how Binder did his, his, um, his analysis, is you can shorten that. It's up to the control of root. One thing from at least Google Cloud's perspective of why we really, really want to move to slub 
is because it solves our CPU jitter problem. And I say we, I'm talking on behalf of the, the Google Cloud customer here, that if we send over a set of reserved cores, then because you do the cache reaping every two seconds on every one of these cores is a design of slab, you see these little hiccups every two seconds when you're trying to do these reserved cores and they actually don't get um, exactly what they're paying for. And so Slub doesn't have that downside. And it's so one of the reasons that we at Google, at least in Google Cloud, definitely want to move toward to using Slub, even if it has an uh, increase in memory footprint. OK, so I guess we have more questions. Uh, so I, ju I just want to say that um, Earlier it was mentioned that uh, Slab uses more metadata, but it sounds like it's not really the metadata that uh, causes the uh, memory overhead difference, but uh, the caching. Yeah, it, uh, it, it is more Slab pages that are tied to CPUs. Mm -hmm. so, so you have free uh, space in those pages, even though nobody allocated them yet. So my... Next question is um, whether per CPU caching uh, makes sense as we increase the number of cores. So uh, when we have um, like 16, 32 cores, maybe it makes sense. But when once we go to hundreds, maybe there shouldn't be just uh, a linear increase. There should be some smaller kind of in increase in caches. I think some per CPU caching has to be there, otherwise it wouldn't scale good. But uh, but right now it caches the slab pages, which contains both used and unused objects. And if it, it was just an array of unused objects, then it could be more effective, hopefully. I understand for the concurrency reasons why we do the per CPU caching, I'm just saying that um, it sounds to me that if we just go proportionally to, num to the number of CPUs, we start caching too much memory than actually, uh, uh, me more memory than is actually needed. M maybe I'm wrong, I'm just... Uh, so you mean the heuristic that... Uh so uh, I'm not saying to have like smaller caches per CPU. No, I'm 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 saying there should be some kind of tree or something like that, of like from which the like tree of buckets or something from uh, from which the resources are, are taken. Again, um, uh, the the graces and scalability uh, should be resolved, but the having a per CPU is not the only solution. And I'll just say that I think that, that Slub's original design is based on returning cache hot objects for every CPU. Yeah, I, I didn't understand your point because the objects that are cached per CPU, they, are, they actually move between CPUs. So if another CPU needs it, it's, it's not going to sit in the same cache. The mechanism is designed to transfer objects and then transfer them back. So there's that sort of stuff going on. I don't know under memory pressure what happens. Maybe the per CPU caches are shrunk or something. I don't know. But I know that they they do travel uh, as needed. So they travel, but obviously there is a high memory overhead with the the slab and the high CPU count systems. Yeah, but it would be fair to argue that with uh, more CPUs you've got more memory, so you care less. It doesn't scale. So, so rapidly that it would be a bigger problem, or at least that's my perception. So I'm not really sure whether that's really a big problem. Is it for anybody? It is a big problem for Google, yes. Yeah, but yeah, the question is how it can be solved by yeah, keeping the same scalability. Yeah, maybe that's one idea what you proposed. And would have to be tried. So I guess uh, yeah, nobody s here seems to be obj objecting to the removal. So I guess the next step would be to again propose it on the mailing list and see if there are uh, other object, other people objecting. And 
ideally they would uh, come with a use case or some benchmark that that's regressing and it's really regressing because of the different design of the allocators and not just some uh, random effect of uh, different object layout affecting caches, which is always a problem in these kinds of benchmarks. And hopefully the motivation would be some actual workload and the benchmark just hopefully uh, reproduces that thing. And but we shouldn't uh, like uh, hold back just for the sake of some micro benchmark. And uh, yeah, if 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 something like uh, that objection and uh, concrete benchmark is found, we can discuss how to uh, how to change slab to accommodate that. There have been also some efforts in the past to. Uh, like merge the best of both allocators, which were abandoned, uh, I think, not because some fundamental issue was uh, found, but what I was uh, reading in the archives, it always just died because there was uh, no no uh, sustained effort. But and yeah, and then probably things changed since then, so the ideas should be adapted anyway. So if we can assume that the uh, slab can be removed, we can consider just how to improve further the remaining allocator, which means it doesn't have to be implemented more than once. And uh, yeah, we already discussed that uh, some different kind of object caching should make sense. And I, I think that it, there are many use cases for that. For example, the better performance or hopefully less memory overhead. We can, we can also consider whether we want to support allocation in things like NMI context using these per CPU caches, but without no guarantee of success because if, if the cache is empty, uh, you cannot do much else in such context. And that would hopefully allow us to remove the BPF allocator, which was created just for this use case. And it would be nice if uh, this was provided by SLAP itself. Then uh, maybe some use cases would need guarantees, like the Maple Tree node pre-allocations, so hopefully the, this kind of caching could accommodate that use case as well. The question is if there would be cache for each cache, and uh, KMEM cache and CPU or uh, for each user that would say, I want this cache of this size. We can uh, discuss that. Yeah, and the point is that uh, Lots of many people reinvent uh, the wheel in the kernel to accommodate for things that the memory management doesn't support itself, and it would be glad if uh, we could do something about that. Because, for example, these uh, non MM uh, core uh, implementations often don't consider things like they should have shrinkers to prevent premature OM, that I think is for example, problem of the BPF allocators. And if we did the implementation, we would uh, do everything properly because we uh, are familiar more with the MM. So if there are any other ideas, I'm open. So one, one problem we have, and arguably this, this should be fixed in the call and, and not in the slab allocator, is um, decache um, poisoning that in a system that has a huge amount of memory that is under no memory pressure, the, the decache will essentially grow without bound um, because you can create as many negative D entries as you want just by looking up files that don't exist. Uh, and we rely on there being some amount of memory pressure to say, hey, you should run the shrinker. And then of course you actually do run the shrinker and it turns out that you've got 11 billion objects and the shrinker that now takes forever to run 
and some of the, something in there is on squared, and it's just an absolute nightmare. And, and Oracle aren't the only people hitting this. Um, we don't hit this on all systems, but we have some very specific systems that do. Um, most of our systems are under plenty of memory pressure, thank you, but some of them not. Um, and we're not the only people who've come across this. If you, if you look for decash poisoning or something like that, you'll, you'll find a number of problems over the years. So I don't know if this needs to be fixed in slab. It arguably, it's Dcache's fault, but something to consider. Yeah, I guess it's specific somehow to the use case, but. But I guess the allocator could provide some building blocks on top of uh, which the solution could be built, and if there's sim just single allocator, it's simpler to do that. Okay, another questions or ideas? Or I'm over time anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you and wish me luck. <laughs>